mail. This is an open source self issue that we've set up at the Selwyn Library. So this is Rob's <laughs> library at the moment. Um, and it's all done on the incredible cheap side of things, basically. We've got a, an old computer, literally so old IT, we're going to throw it out. I said, oh no, I can use that for something. Just running Windows. And uh, a regular screen, mouse scanner, and receipt printer. Uh, these are all just stuff that was lying around, and we tend to have. Uh, apart from the receipt printer, which we bought, because it turned out that one particular type of receipt printer worked better than others. So we thought, well, just make, make it easy, get lots of those for our various branches. Um, I'll run you through how it works, and then we can just look at some of the behind the scenes type stuff. So this is just running on a, a browser, so it's an internet window, maximised, so there's no controls or home buttons or anything that people can hit or mess around with. Come and scan your card. This runs off to the uh, library's server, checks who you are and that you're allowed to borrow things. Comes up with a name and you're ready to proceed. Scan some books. The hardest thing about this whole process is teaching people not to scan the ISDN. Um, if you've got ideas, get in touch. But <laughs> we'll just try doing things on the posters. So run a couple of books through the self issue. It's coming up with a name for the book and the date that it's due back. And then you've got a choice of receipt. So you can print a receipt right now, you can go no receipt, or there's actually an option built into the software, which is almost entirely free, it's open source, uh, to email the receipt. But it just requires a bit of jiggery pokery, which I haven't got my council IT guys to do yet. I'm going to print a receipt. It's set up to suppress the whole you know, choose printer, pages, that sort of stuff dialog box. It just automatically hits print. You've got your receipt and you can walk out. Now the advantage that we have over a lot of other libraries, I suppose, is that we're historically so small and poorly funded, we've never had a security system on our books, so we don't have any magnetic stuff to desensitise, and we don't have any RFID things to turn on or off. So, trusting our community basically, having issued it, they can walk out the door. Now you can configure these systems to work with magnetic security and with RFID. There's this guy, Eric Melton, from the Kirkendale Library in America. He's developed this. Uh, he was hired as an AV librarian, and uh, like us, they couldn't afford to buy a proper self-issue machine. It's thirty thousand dollars or whatever they're currently going for. So he looked at how the communication actually works, ignoring all the fancy you know, boxes that they come with, and um, worked out how to do that same communication for free. So I'll show you a bit about how that's set up. Now, you may be wondering, how do we stop people messing around with this? The main thing is having a full screen so that you can't hit anything accidentally, but also hiding the keyboard. <laughs> so we've literally stretched it over there, hidden on a different shelf. No one can actually do anything unless they can type. Uh, you could also go with a, a touch screen. We do have one touch screen self-issue set up, which is um, quite good. People quite intuitively now try and touch it. In fact, some of these you end up having to put a notice on saying, this is not the touch screen, because people go, <coughs> trying to get things to work. So we've just simply got a mouse at the moment which works fine. Most people are absolutely used to that. So I'm going to shut this browser down, and you'll see it has just come out as a web page like anything else. So that was full screen. Now you can see this is just a standard Windows computer. Uh, it's been set up with a limited user account. So I logged on as the admin, I set all this up, and then created a, a limited user account for just the self-issue. So if anyone was to find the keyboard, do this, there's nothing they can do. They can't get on the network, they can't go browse, find any files, or do anything destructive. The worst they can do is probably turn it off. Um, so it's pretty much an empty Windows computer. It's doing two things. It's running some PHP software. It's open source, it's free, it's called Easy PHP. Really easy to work with. Installed it, it was running in five minutes. Absolutely blast. Um, that's because the, the scripts, you know, the programming stuff this guy, Eric, uh, Melton Road runs PHP, which is just a different type of web page, one that can interact and get random data, so it can put your name on it, it's dynamic, instead of the page where you've written it and it's the same forever. So we put this PHP stuff on so it can read those scripts and uh, render them really quickly, and then we've got, got a copy of um, Firefox Portable. So that means you can set up all the settings for this, including go full screen, suppress the print dialog, make the colour blue, and whatever you choose to have. You can then copy that, stick it on another computer without setting it up. All the settings are saved in that folder. So it's really easy. Firefox Portable is a terrific tool. 
So yeah, this is set so that the computer turns on. Uh, in the startup folder, we've got a couple of the tools that need to run automatically. Where the startup is. So we've got EasyPHP runs as a service whenever the computer turns on. So that's automatically ready to go as a server. It automatically starts a home page in Firefox Portable for the self-issue. And it's running a little um, printer thing for the receipt printer, which is just down to a quirk of whichever brand you have to have. So yeah, this is set to log on, start those things. By the time you've come to it five minutes later, or however long it takes for the cranky old computer you've chosen to install this on, you've got this browser open and it's ready for business. Grand cost, pretty much nothing. We did buy the receipt printer, uh, otherwise it's just old gear the receipt IT department was about to throw out. But we've found it works really well. We've got about, probably about 20% of our issues are going through these machines across the three branches we currently have them in. And that means, doing some quick maths, you know, we're saving about $30,000 a year, you know, about 75% of a library assistant wage. Now, of course, we don't give that back to the council. What we do is we can use that in more interesting ways. So people are freed up, they can actually spend that amount more time doing interesting things, writing guides, helping customers directly instead of issuing the actual books. Plus the customers actually like it. This is self-empowerment. And that's my lesson from today on the self-issue.